Good day once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are looking at assets and bases uh, on question seven today. All right, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, just, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button and get our numbers really, really, really going. Uh, and uh, for those of you who need assistance with the mathematics or physical science, uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah, I even tell your brothers and your cousins, hey, just to email me or at uh, info at timlumisinkosi.co.za. Right, so let's have a look at, uh, you know, that assets and basis question, okay? Uh, they say learners prepare a solution of unknown concentration by dissolving two grams uh, of pure sodium hydroxide crystals in water in a 250 cubic centimeters uh, volumetric flask. Now, uh, they say write down the term of the underlined phrase. Now, remember, what is a solution of known concentration? Okay, we say it is a standard solution. Okay, please keep that in mind. Right, now the next question, uh, they say calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution. All right, so remember we are given the, um, you know, the crystals, the, the mass of the crystals, and they also gave us the volume. So we're going to have to consult our periodic table to some extent. Okay, so we're going to say in this case uh, for 7.2.1, Okay, so um, we're going to calculate the concentration. That's mass divided by molar mass uh, multiplied by the volume there, or divided by the volume, right? We've got two grams divided by. Now, I want you to uh, notice we're going to go to the periodic table uh, to just check the amount of sodium hydroxide, and you'll see that sodium, okay, uh, in this case would be 23 okay obviously oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1 okay so if we add those up all right if we add 23 plus 16 plus 1 that gives us 40 grams per mole okay so this is 40 grams per mole and that is what we're going to put there okay that's molar mass and multiply that by the volume and please remember that when we use this formula uh, that volume should always be in cubic decimeters so i'm going to say 250 divided by a thousand and that should give me 0 0.25 okay right so um what do we get there and i get an amount of uh, 0 0.2 uh, moles per cubic decimeters all right so that's the amount of uh, uh, that's the concentration rather of sodium hydroxide okay and uh, they say to us we should calculate the ph of the solution all right just keep in mind uh, we've got a base here okay and one how does a base actually uh, dissociate um, so sodium hydroxide forms sodium plus ions and hydroxide ions now please i want you to note in this case uh, when we calculate ph we do not use hydroxide ions but what do we use we use uh, in this case um, you know uh, hydronium ions h plus ions so what we can do is to say well look we can find out then uh, um, you know the concentration of our hydroxide ions for every one concentration, for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, I produce one mole of hydroxide ions. Remember, this is in the same volume. So I can say, therefore, the concentration of hydroxide ions should also be the same as what we got uh, in our previous question, which is 0 0.2 moles per cubic decimeters. Now, remember, we still cannot calculate concentration based, I mean, uh, pH based on the, uh, you know, uh, based on, uh, yeah, the concentration of our hydroxide ions. But what we can do is we can either calculate POH or we can use the ionization constant formula. KW is equals to H plus concentration of our hydronium ions multiplied by the concentration of our hydroxide ions. This is equal to 10 to the power minus 14 right but we already have that concentration so we're looking for h plus concentration multiplied by 0 
should give us 10 to the power minus 14. Okay, so we can divide both sides by 0 0.2 uh, to get our hydronium ion concentration. Okay, and in this case, we can say, well, 10 um, uh, to the power minus 14, uh, we divide that by 0 0.2. Okay, I get a value of 5 times 10 to the power minus 14. Uh, remember, that's concentration, and that's measured in moles per cubic decimeters, right? So this will be moles per cubic decimeters. Yeah, let me just get this out of the way. Uh, per cubic decimeters. Okay, right. Now, um, uh, so now we've got the, uh, the, the concentration of our hydronium ions. Now we can calculate pH and say, but pH is minus the log of our H plus concentration or H3O plus. Remember that H plus and H3O plus are exactly the same thing. Uh, so please don't be alarmed if I used H plus in your formula. It says H3O plus, right? Uh, so that's minus the log of H plus. So that's going to be minus the log of 5 times 10 to the power minus 14. Okay. And in this case, uh, we say minus the log uh, minus the log of our answer. Okay, and I get an answer of 13.3. So my pH is 13.3. Okay, uh, sorry, pH is equal to 13.3. And please remember that pH does not have any units. Okay, uh, alternatively, um, uh, you know, I'm not sure if I, I should actually go through that um, you know, in depth, uh, what I could have done is for this one here, remember I already had the concentration of my hydronium ions there, okay? So what I could do is just to simply say, look, uh, let's find out what is the POH. So if you don't want to go through this one, you can find out the POH and how you calculate POH we say it's minus the log of hydro hydroxide ions, right? So you would have said that's minus the log of 0 0.2, okay? Because we already had that, okay? Uh, if you calculate that uh, minus the log um, minus the log of 0 0.2, um, and it gives us 0 0.69, 0 0.7, if you say. Okay, so 0 0.7, and then what you can now do is say POH, uh, rather uh, pH plus POH, yeah, same thing, same difference. Uh, so pH plus POH is equal to 14. You know, I don't like uh, teaching these side by side because um, just remember, if you're using this one, it's equal to 10 to the minus 14. Okay, uh, by the way, you're given in your formula sheet, uh, so you don't need to... Uh, uh, however, you're not given this one here. These two, you're not given. Okay, but it is somewhat easier to, to calculate using this. So, therefore, pH would be equal to 14. Okay, but uh, remember, pOH, we found it to be uh, 0 0.7. And in this case, it would still give you the same answer of 13.3. Okay, right. So, that's another way. That's an alternative way of calculating the same thing. All right. Um, and then uh, looking at the next question, okay, they said to us uh, we should calculate the, oh no, uh, so we need to read the statement there. They say the learners now react to 1.5 grams, okay, of pure calcium carbonate, okay, with 50 cubic centimeters of dilute hydrochloric acid of unknown concentration. Okay, so they give us, uh, um, yeah, calcium carbonate crystals. Okay, so they say uh, the excess hydrochloric acid is neutralized with 25 cubic centimeters uh, of sodium hydroxide solution that they prepared. All right, now remember, uh, so we've got two equations or we've got two reactions that are going to take place here. We've got the reaction between hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate, of which, remember, the only thing that we have there 
is um, you know the the mass of calcium carbonate and we don't know anything else about the hydrochloric acid that was used okay we don't know the concentration of it however we do know that sorry uh, they they did use 50 cubic centimeters okay right now um, le let's just have a look at it quickly so uh, they say the excess hydrochloric acid is neutralized by 25 cubic centimeters now I'm gonna sort of start at the end if you don't mind ne? so remember the hydrochloric acid that we started with here was used with the calcium carbonate okay but there was an amount of it that actually remained unused and it was used in the next uh, reaction okay so what I'm going to do is uh, they wanted to find out the initial concentration now please I want you to stay with me a bit on this one if I can find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted here in the second reaction and also find the number of moles of the you know hydrochloric acid that reacted in the first reaction okay remember the sum of those two would give me actually the total number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we used I, I hope that that makes sense right so in this case I'm going to simply say let's start with the you know with the second one uh, because I've got the concentration of sodium hydroxide but I also have the volume that was used so I'll say well for the second reaction the number of moles of sodium hydroxide okay that's concentration times volume remember the concentration is the one that we uh, you, you know we calculated there so it was 0 0.2 multiplied by the volume that was used there is 25 cubic centimeters okay so uh, that's divided by a thousand so that would be 0 0.025 okay uh, so let's calculate that 0 0.2 times 0 0.025 and that gives me okay this would be 0 0.005 moles so these are the moles of sodium hydroxide okay but now I want you to please note for every one mole of sodium hydroxide used there I will also use one mole of hydrochloric acid so what does that mean it means that the number so therefore it means that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the second reaction is also going to be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide why because it's a one-to-one -one ratio so in this case it's equal to 0 0.005 moles okay right so I've got the number of moles so this is the excess amount so I want you to think about it what do you mean by excess amount it means it's the one that was left after we went through the first reaction so the hydrochloric acid that was left in the first reaction we now use in the second reaction okay right now would it be possible for us to find out the number of moles uh, uh, of hydrochloric acid in the first reaction okay I'd say well remember we're given the uh, 1.5 grams of pure calcium carbonate so let's find out the number of moles of calcium carbonate uh, that were given okay why am I using calcium carbonate because remember it would be my limiting reagent since hydrochloric acid was in excess okay not all of it reacted so I am going to say well number of moles of calcium carbonate I'm given the mass which is 1.5 uh, so sorry that's mass divided by molar mass so that would be 1.5 grams and go to your periodic table again uh, calcium uh, you take carbon uh, and uh, three oxygens there okay so the molar mass of calcium carbonate is 100 you can please work it out uh, for yourself so we're going to say 1.5 divided by uh, uh, divided by 100 and in this case we get 0 0.015 0 0.015 uh, moles now please I want you to note again 
So we found the number of moles of uh, calcium carbonate, but what are we actually looking for? The number of moles of hydrochloric acid that were used, okay? So it means, therefore, uh, remember, for every two hydrochloric acid, I use one calcium carbonate. Uh, I'm sure you can already see that. For every one of this, there'll be two hydrochloric acid. So in this case, if I've got 0 0.015, I will have twice the amount of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so um, in this case, how many moles of hydrochloric acid would give me 0 0.015? I'm sure most of you can already see that. Okay, so n times 1, that would be n. And that would be zero, 2 times 0 0.015 would be 0 0.03 moles. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully. So what you notice now is that I found the number of moles of hydrochloric acid used during the reaction with calcium carbonate. But I also found the number of moles that were in excess. That, that means the ones that did not react with the calcium carbonate, the ones that were left after the reaction. Remember, they took those and they used them in this reaction. So it means, therefore, the total number of moles, so the initial number of moles of uh, uh, a hydrochloric acid, okay, would actually be... All right, the ones that were in excess plus the ones that I actually used during that reaction. Okay, so it means it would be uh, the ones used uh, plus the one in excess. Okay, so in that case, it would mean that uh, we're going to add those two 0 0.03 um, plus. 0 0.05 okay uh, yeah am I saying that correctly yeah we found 0 0.05 uh, to be in excess so you'd say 0 0.03 sorry about that uh, 0 0.003 uh, sorry 0 0.03 plus 0 0.005 okay so what I find for the number of moles there that's going to be 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.035 moles of um, uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay, so I'm trying to scramble for some space there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, just squeeze it in here. Remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for concentration. So we're going to say concentration is number of moles over volume. Okay, right. We're given the volume to be 50 cubic centimeters. Okay, uh, so... Um, so that we're going to take our number of moles 0 0.035 divided by our total volume okay they said our initial volume was 50 cubic centimeters uh, we divide that by thousand so that's 0 0.05 and that should give you your concentration so we're going to say 0 0.035 divided by 0 0.05 Okay, uh, I get a concentration of 0 0.7 uh, moles per cubic decimeters. Okay, um, sorry about that, that I had to squeeze it in here. Okay, uh, that's our total uh, mark. Okay, uh, so and this was uh, an eight mark question. All right, definitely worth it. Okay, um, I hope that I've explained it well enough for you to understand. And, of course, we can pick up all of these other marks uh, as well. Okay. Right. So, we'll see each other again when we look at the next question. Please don't forget to tell your friends that, hey, you have a plug on YouTube, eh? All right. And I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.